Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at how to boot Linux from a USB memory stick. This can be handy if you want to try out a live version of Linux, or alternatively if you want to install Linux on a computer that has no optical drive. You can also use live versions of Linux distributions to run diagnostics on your computer, and also to recover files from a system that won't boot anymore. OK, let's get started. So first, we need a blank USB stick of at least 4 gigabytes in size or more. Then we're going to need to get a copy of Linux. Now, one particular version of Linux that I like to use is Linux Mint, and this can be gotten from the linuxmint.com website. Alternatively, you can go to distrowatch.com where they have a large selection of different Linux distributions that you can view there. So here we are at the linuxmint.com website. And if we go to the download page, you can then go to Linux Mint 20.1. From here, you can see some information about this particular version of Linux Mint. And then you can choose one of three different versions. Cinnamon is probably the nicest one to look at, so I'm going to pick that one. And from here then you can choose a download link depending on which country you're in. If one of the links doesn't work, just try one of the other ones. They all contain the same version of Linux Mint. Once you click on one of the links, you should get the option to save the file. Just try and put the file somewhere where you'll remember where it is when you were looking for it later on. I've just made a folder on my drive called Disk Images, and I'm saving it in there. This can take a little while to download because it's a fairly large file of 1.9 gigabytes, so you may have to wait a few minutes. Once you've finished downloading Linux, the next thing you'll want to do is go to rufus.ie, that's R-U-F-U-S dot I-E, and here you'll find a great little application which will allow you to transfer the ISO file contents onto your USB memory stick. So to do this, just go to the download link and click on the latest version. There's two versions, one which you can install or a portable version which will run from another memory stick or just a folder on your hard drive. And I'm going to save this into the same folder. OK, it's a really quick download. That's done now. Once Rufus has finished downloading, all you need to do is double click the file to run the program. And from here, we have an interface where we need to change a few things to set up our USB stick. So the first thing we need to do is select the right USB stick. So that's a very important step. Make sure that you pick the particular one that you want to record your ISO file onto because it's going to erase the memory stick. So if you have anything important on it, you'll want to back it up at this stage. OK, so once you've selected that, the next thing you want to do is select the actual ISO file that you want to put onto your memory stick. So I've already done this, but you can usually select from here and then you can go to the particular file that you saved a little earlier on. You select that and go open and then it will choose this file as the one to go on your system. OK, and the next thing you want to do is pretty much leave everything as it is. MBR is fine for the partition scheme. Uh, the target system standard BIOS or UEFI BIOS should probably work. And then what do you want to name the memory stick? So I'm going to actually just choose a shorter version. I'm going to call it Linux Mint 20. And I'm just keeping it all the same word. And then I'm going to leave everything else as it is. FAT32 file system, cluster size 4096 bytes. Quick format is fine if you know that your memory stick is working OK. Um, but if you prefer, you can untick that and it will do a long format. Once you're happy to uh, format the disk and put the operating system on it, then click Start. It's always a good idea just to double check, though, up here to make sure that you're not using the wrong memory stick. If, if you're worried about overwriting another memory stick by accident, just take out any other memory sticks out of your machine so that you can't accidentally format them. Once you're ready, just click on Start. And it'll give us a little message here. This image uses Syslinux 
but this application only includes the installation files for Syslinux 6.04 Pre. As new versions of Syslinux are not compatible with one another, and it wouldn't be possible for Rufus to include them all, two additional files must be downloaded from the internet. Select yes to connect to the internet and download these files. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, and then it says the image you have selected is an ISO hybrid image. This means it can be written either as an, an ISO image mode or DD image disk image mode. Rufus recommends using ISO image mode so that you will always have full access to the drive after writing it. However, if you encounter issues during boot, you can try writing this image again in DD image mode. Okay, well, let's go with the one that Rufus recommends. Click OK. And this can take a few minutes to download the files and then also to write the disk, depending on the speed of your memory stick. Okay, at this point it's saying, warning, all data on device, no label, will be destroyed. Okay, so I just want to remind you of that. If you have important files on your memory stick, don't do this. Okay, make sure you've backed up anything first. And click OK then. And it's deleting the partitions on the memory stick. And now it's formatting it and creating the file system. So what it's doing is it's taking the files from the ISO and rewriting them onto the memory stick so that they will be accessible. So this can take a little while. So in the meantime, I'm just going to pause the video and then we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so that's done now. Once your memory stick is ready, all you have to do then is place the USB memory stick into one of the USB ports on the computer you want to start up. And then once the computer has been turned on, you'll need to press one of the following keys to get the system to go into the boot menu. So it can be anything from escape, F2, F10, F11, or F12. And once you've pressed it enough times at the beginning of the startup, you should be given an option to boot from uh, different devices. And in this case, we're going to be choosing the removable device. Okay, so I've started up my PC and I have the memory stick inserted into the USB slot. Now, I just pressed pause on the keyboard in order to stop the boot uh, process from going any further, just so you can see the screen there. And it says press delete to run BIOS setup or press F11 to run boot menu. So in this case, what we would do is press F11 to start the boot menu. So I'm going to press F11 now. And this gives us a menu like this. So in this case, it's not particularly obvious from what it says here. But what we actually want to boot from here is the UEFI general partition one. That actually is referring to the memory stick. The other options would be to boot from the hard drive um, and possibly uh, some other devices if you had them installed. But what we want is UEFI general partition one. For you, it might be something else. It might be something like removable media, uh, removable drive, USB. Sometimes it can be a little bit of trial and error to find the one you want. But I'm just going to press uh, UEFI general partition now, press enter. And straight away, we get an option to start Linux Mint Cinnamon. Uh, there's also a couple of other options for things like uh, checking the integrity of the medium or starting in compatibility mode. But what we want to do is just start it up in normal mode. And now it will continue to boot up Linux Mint. So here's the Linux Mint logo. And it loads up pretty quickly from the USB stick, usually quite a lot faster than it would do from an optical disk. And there we go. We're on to the Linux Mint desktop. OK, so hopefully this uh, video will have been useful for you. And just to remind you, the website to go to for Rufus is rufus.ie 
And for Linux Mint, it's linuxmint.com. Thank you for watching.